Hi everybody, Charlie and Linda here with you for another Facebook Live presentation. Hello. And the topic today is the bandwagon effect. And a bandwagon is a float in a parade that's got music on it. Sometimes live musicians, sometimes recorded music, but it's all upbeat. And this began in the 19th century in the US to encourage the people who are watching the parade to come and jump on the bandwagon and be a part of the fun. And this was to promote awareness about a political candidate that was running for office and to set up an energetic, look at all those people jumping on that bandwagon on behalf of such and such a candidate if all of those people are voting for him, I'll vote for him too. He must be good. So the consumer industry, do you know the marketing people on Madison Avenue saw how effective this bandwagon effect was getting people to vote for their candidate and their political party, that they adopted it and they got a whole energetic going about this product. If you buy this product, look at all the people who are buying this product, which really increased sales because of the mentality of if all these people are buying it, it must be good. I'll buy it too. So how does this work with relationships? If you are around people who are negative about relationships, who have settled about relationships, and there certainly are a lot of disappointments and frustration about relationships, we're very influenced and that has a bandwagon effect too. If we happen to be around people or intentionally choose to be around people who are optimistic about relationships, who are thriving in their relationships, who are learning the skills and developing the qualities that relationships can be delightful and splendid, that has an effect too. So we need to be careful about not being influenced and manipulated by the naysayers who say relationships are impossible and they're more trouble than they're with and be with the people who have an optimistic attitude because we're very influenced by the people that we're around. Yeah, well, I'm glad that you have made good choices about the people that you're around. And you have too, and I'm grateful mm -hmm. that you're around the optimists. Well, it's an interesting question of um, why it is that, that we do often choose to be around certain people who do not support us in cultivating a more hopeful attitude about things mm -hmm. um, and rather can reinforce the tendency to look at things from a more negative uh, perspective. You know, pe people uh, who tend to be more uh, cynical. And um, <coughs> there is something that, that's kind of attractive mm -hmm. um, about people who reinforce that part of us that it is pessimistic. Um, one of the things about that is is that it feels safer yeah. when you don't set your hopes or expectations too high because then there's not so much at stake. There's not such a big risk if you don't go for things that um you know are bigger and you kind of <laughs> set your sights and your standards low and you surround yourself with people who reinforce that um because of their own negativity or their own experiences or their own biases um then there's less there's less risk and, and, you know, it's really easy to underestimate just how motivated a lot of us are by our desire to minimize or even avoid risk. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing about the bandwagon effect is that there is this belief that there's safety in numbers and that if a lot of people believe something, then it 
must be true or it's more likely to be true. And so they can't <laughs> all be wrong. So it feels safer to go with the crowd. Right. In, in social psychology, mm. they have terms for this, going for the crowd. They call it groupthink <clears throat> or herd mentality. And in the extreme, these are rare circumstances, mob behavior, mm. where people are caught up in this herd mentality and they don't stop to really think about their own belief system and their own values. And they go with the crowd. They go with the group think. And it's dangerous to do that. You can end up making choices that you regret later because you didn't pause to reflect about whether this was a behavior or a choice that you really wanted to make. Well, the other thing about going with the herd, and by the way, that's H-E-R-D. Right. As opposed to... Um, a like herd, a herd of a cows. Herd of critters. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to E-A-R-D, like I heard it through the grapevine. Mm -hmm. um, but um, there's, um, you know, there, there's advantages to, to doing that. But there's also, you know, potentially some real problems with it because the herd doesn't always know what's best for you. Um, but the temptation to go with that is is uh, can be strong if we don't really trust our own judgment that much. And we think that other people might know better than we do, particularly if there's large numbers of them. Right. So we jump on that bandwagon. Yeah. So the bandwagon that a lot of people we hear from that they're jumping on is this negative idea. Now, look at your own experience. If you hang around people who read a lot, who take classes, you'll probably be influenced by them. You'll read more. You might sign up for classes to further your um, knowledge and your wisdom. If you're around people who are health conscious, they're exercising, they're going to the gym, they're biking, they're hiking, they're working out, they're eating very healthy foods, you're probably influenced by those people. If you're around people who are politically aware and keep themselves informed, you're probably influenced to listen to the news, to discuss political uh, candidates, to be informed so that you can vote and make wise choices. So if you look to your own experience and you look to who is influencing you in your mm -hmm. attitudes and your beliefs about relationship, you may have people in your own family. Maybe they're your own parents. Maybe they're you yourself. Maybe they're siblings or your best friends who have had disappointments and broken dreams in their relationship, and they're the naysayers. So nobody has a great relationship. Or it's only for the very rare, lucky few. And it's more trouble than it's worth. If you want to see all the different fears that can sh show up and the rationalizations and justifications, our book number three was a collection of stories and um, myths that people have about relationships needing to be um, short view of what you can have, a limited view of what's available, not an exalted view or a golden, going for the golden view of what's possible. So be careful who you're influenced by. Be careful to examine what they are saying to you and how deeply that's going in for you that you might hold fast to that to lower your sight so you're not disappointed. It's an attempt to avoid pain, but while we're busy avoiding risk to avoid pain, we're avoiding the risks that can breed us the greatest joy and the greatest happiness and the greatest fulfillment in our relationships. So, so let's just take a look at why we are so vulnerable to adopting external views of other people, <clears throat> uh, which in some cases will, will 
cause us to override our own instincts, our own impulses, our own values even. Right. Um, you know, how many times have you ever had the experience of having a certain sense about something and then somebody said something to you and you reconsidered your initial response to it and you changed your mind and then afterwards you realize, no, I was right all along. I was right in the first place. Why did I do that? And a lot of times we don't really look at that question because it's a powerful question. Why did I do that? Why did I override what felt to me to be accurate and right and true um, when that person came in and offered me a different perspective? <laughs> Not to say that sometimes we don't have an awful lot to learn from other people's perspective, but did I do that consciously? Did I really consider the validity of my own view? Did I do, consider how valid is this person's perspective? Are they biased in some way? Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, did I really consider that? Or did I just assume that, well, they must know better than I do, and then override my own, my own instincts, my, my own perspective? So one of the things that we want to do is we don't want to discourage an openness to other people's perspectives and points of view but we, we also want to encourage you to take your own experience more seriously and to develop a higher level of trust in your own judgment mm -hmm. now sometimes our own judgment is not so great sometimes it's distorted because of experiences that we've had <clears throat> but 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 it's possible that we can up level the validity and the accuracy of our own judgment more and in doing so we are less vulnerable to automatically assuming that other people know best particularly if they have initials after their name you know like phd or md or you know experts mm -hmm. so-called um and so um you know how can we do that we can do that by taking the risk of trusting ourselves and acting on behalf of what we really believe to be correct rather than subordinating our view to somebody else's when we're not certain that they're correct right so this looking inside to see what's really true for us is it really true in my estimation and consideration in fact we're not uh, attempting to influence you not to solicit information from other people right. but we want you to be discerning about soliciting intentionally information from people who are having a good time in their relationships who are having successful relationships and there are a lot of people around who are having really successful relationships they may be a little um, cautious about waving their flag about how happy they are in their relationships because they don't want to sound conceited or you know uppity or arrogant or anything like that but um if we ask them if we see people who we think in our own family in our friendship system we see that they are really thriving in their relationship those people can be delighted to be asked their secrets of success We've been seeking these people out for decades now, and they usually are really happy to tell their secrets of success. Now, there's a bandwagon worth jumping on. That's a very positive bandwagon. But we take the information that they're offering to us, and we take a look and look for our own experience, whether that rings true for us. The other complainers, the people who are victim-y about relationships are just too hard and they're not worth the trouble and all the good men are taken and all the good women are already taken and those kinds of negative messages, we want to consider those. Does that really fit for what we know deep in our intuitive natural knowing is true or not? So we want to collect information from the people around us about relationship and find out what's really true for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, 
that uh, is a really important point that um, we want to be discerning um, ab about the people who we do put ourselves um, in a position of being influenced by. And, you know, to, to have a criteria for uh, determining, it's not like we're saying, well, you know, if, if people don't see things the way you want them to, then that shouldn't be in your life. I mean, th there's always going to be, uh, you know, people with whom you don't agree uh, eye to eye with uh, about certain things and you know you might even be probably are married to them if you're married because you know we all have different points of view and they're in our family mm -hmm. and they've been friends of ours for yeah. a long time we're not dismissing any of these people but some of their ideas we might dismiss well well also you know one of the things that influences us to um, to defer to the judgment of these people sometimes is that if they are close to us or if they're in our families, there's a sense of uh, loyalty that we may have to them, which extends into their perspectives and their beliefs. So it may feel like in some ways we're being um, disrespectful um, if we don't adhere to and agree with some of their values and some of some of their views because that's you know that's the way we do it in this family that's how we see things that's who we are um and and you know we don't necessarily want to jeopardize th that connection we don't want to risk offending those people or um you know risk them having hurt feelings or being upset or or angry, so there's this sense of uh, obligation to be loyal, and, and you know that also <laughs> adds another element of risk to the willingness to to, um, to honor our own perspective, even if it means going against um, their their point of view or the approved way of doing or saying. Or seeing things right so you're talking about being self-referential yeah to practice being self-trusting and looking inside to see does this belief really fit us and the reason that it is so important and we try to drive this point home is that we're wanting to encourage the people in our network in every way the blogs we write the books we write the counseling we do the teachers the classes that we teach and the Facebook lives and YouTube videos that we do are all to promote happiness and well-being. And the people who study this are really clear, these positive psychology people, that only half of a influence is genetic, only 10% is the circumstances of our life, and 40%, a very large component, is our beliefs and our attitudes that drive our behaviors. So we need to examine our beliefs. We need to examine our attitudes. Do we reach high? Do we have a firm belief lodged in our belief system that relationships can be wonderful, they can enhance our life, they can support us to reach our life goals, that they can add the most purpose and meaning to our life, that they can be a jumping off place to take on challenges that without that level of support and that team of support, we wouldn't dare to take on, that we could risk having some disappointments, we could crash and burn even some of our goals not met, and we've got a safe haven to come back to, to repair ourselves, to restore ourselves, to um, get stronger so that we can go out with more challenges again. And we need to believe that it is possible that we have the strength to recover if we have some disappointments, that we will take risks in relationship when we're going for the gold, but we can come back to ourselves and we can be okay and better than before from cultivating the resilience which allows us to become stronger, more self-actualized people. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, 
Another thing that's attractive about um, the bandwagon effect is that when we throw our hat in the ring to kind of mix metaphors here mm -hmm. um, with a group of other people, <clears throat> what we're doing is we're relieving ourselves of a certain amount of responsibility for having to get clear and decide and ultimately act on the basis of our own judgment. Um, so it's sort of like a shortcut. Uh, like if I'm um, a Republican, um, I am going to just go with what the party says so I don't have to discern um, among um, other people. You know, I can just say, well, whatever, you know, I'm a member of this group, so therefore I'm going to follow whatever they're doing. Relieves me of the responsibility of having to decide and having to think things out and then having to make a conscious choice and then to, to really um, be accountable for what <clears throat> I'm choosing here because I'm, I'm identifying with a larger group and, and I can uh, avoid that, that kind of complicated or uncomfortable process of having to really put the time and the energy and sometimes the struggle into getting clear about what is the correct response here? What is the best thing to do? Who is the best person? Uh, to vote for. Um, and, you know, in, in relationships, responsibility is probably the biggest factor in terms of <clears throat> determining the likelihood of the relationship being successful. If both people are really willing to be accountable and responsible in terms of their own choices, and they're not blaming other people or holding them responsible, uh, and they're really showing up themselves in the relationship, the likelihood of that being a successful relationship, whether it's short term or long term or something in between, is much, much higher than it is when one or both people are not willing to take on that level of responsibility. So we've already spoken about risk and we've talked about resilience, the courage to risk, the bounce back ability, of resilience and now you're talking about responsibility the three r's and i want to <laughs> add one more component which i see as really useful i love when the social psychologists use the term mm -hmm. herd behavior and group think i go so far as to say that would cover the majority that they're not thinking independently and stepping into a leadership role and for those who are going for the gold, who are not at effect of the herd mentality or the group think that relationships are so hard and they're not worth the effort, they're stepping into a very responsible role of being leaders and thinking independently and being self-referential. They're not just going the way the social drift is going where half of the people are separating from their marriages and the people who are left in them, you know, large number of those aren't really happy. They're just bearing it. So this is your engraved invitation to step up to leadership, to courage and risk, to thinking independently, to being self-referential and being careful about the bandwagon that you jump on and make sure that it's going to be one that really fits for mm -hmm. you and your life goals. And we hope that your life goal is to have great relationships, not just okay relationships, but great relationships. And particularly if in your romantic partnership to have a great romantic partnership. That would be a good note to end on. Yeah. I want to tell them what we're talking about next week. People ask us a lot, give me the tools. I want the concrete tools 
to make my relationship great. I got ambition, I got motivation, I got plenty of fuel in my tank to do it. Could you just give me some specifics? So next week, we are going to be talking about some specific practices that will enhance your romantic partnership. And you can use a lot of these for your other relationships with your kids and your parents and your siblings and on the job and your friends too. So we hope you will tune in with us at our changed time next week. We have been meeting for many months at 12.30 Pacific time on Thursdays and we're changing to 1.30. And I hope that fits in your schedule. They'll all be archived. If you don't have it fitting into your schedule, you can still see them. And we look forward to talking to you next week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just want to remind everybody that it is okay if you have friends who you think might be interested in any of the con any of our talks. Particularly this one next week is very, very practical in terms of uh, the tools necessary to develop the skills that high-level relationships involve. So feel free to tell your friends about our talks. And uh, 1.30 next week, that's Pacific time. And um, look forward to seeing you then. See you then. Bye.